Hello, everyone. Today is Tuesday, August the 1st. I'm Ryan Hill. I'm John Galantis. And you're listening to Clearview Today with Dr. Abadan Shah, the daily show that engages mind and heart for the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com, or if you have any questions for Dr. Shah or suggestions for new topics, send us a text to 252 252- 582-5028, or you can email us at contact at clearviewtodayshow.com. That's right, and you guys can help us keep this conversation going by supporting the show, sharing it online. You can leave us a good review on iTunes or Spotify, anywhere you get your podcasting content from. We're going to leave a link in the description of this podcast so you can do just that. The verse of the day today comes from Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 10. Do not say, why were the old days better than these? For it is not wise to ask such questions. Now, boomers... Everybody, boomers. Now let me Gen tell X, you, back in my day, I don't want y'all to take offense to this. <laughs> I do not want y'all to take offense to because I'm just a millennial, right? So I got sure. no clue how the world works, right? But Solomon's talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, Solomon says this, but there's a lot of things that I have seen like millennials lean do, toward yeah, for yeah. the nostalgia. I do like, it too. I'm like. Mm. But weren't the old days better than this? Well, here's the thing. Now with millennials, like boomers didn't have social media. Gen X is kind of coming up. Like like they were around when social media was getting its thing. Right. But now social media can capitalize on nostalgia. Nostalgia has always been marketable. Oh, yeah, yeah. But yeah, now sure. we're seeing social media being, I mean, we're seeing nostalgia be like really heavily marketed. Mm-hmm. They're even saying, they're even putting nostalgia, like Nickelodeon has that like 90s back blast to the past like all your old favorite cartoons Mm -hmm. relive all that nostalgia it's like hey not only do we know that you want all this stuff we're gonna like straight up tell you what you're feeling and we're gonna give it to you like this is great but solomon says yeah don't do that don't ask why the old days were better than these it's not wise one of the things that you know i think about the old days and it makes me think about like saturday morning bowl of cereal watching cartoons yeah solomon never watched hey arnold to be solomon, fair i know he was oh, the wisest man who like ever lived power rangers but yeah like Voltron. he never solomon, come on man he never watched hey arnold he didn't he didn't grow up on doug funny and rugrats and all that stuff man like like if i, I feel like if he had he'd be like hey yeah, a little bit of nostalgia every now and then. the point i mean the point there though is is relevant for all of us no matter what age group you fall in it, it doesn't do any, it doesn't benefit anybody to just stay staring at the past. Yeah, it's fine to remember and it's fine yeah, to be, yeah. like look back fondly on things. But if you're stuck, like, oh, I wish we could go back. I wish we could do this. Well, God's plan for you is in the future. God's well, plan for you is out here. If we're looking in the rearview mirror, we're gonna miss yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. What was one of those breakfast cereals that you uh, that you wouldn't eat nowadays? Oh gosh, um, probably favorite for me mm-hmm. was either Fruity Pebbles. Fr- Fruity, Pebbles Fruity Pebbles was good. Yeah. Or um, uh, Crunch Berries. You know what's funny is I would I was gonna say Captain Crunch because back then I didn't I didn't realize it, but it would like tear the roof of every my mouth time. all every, up. It's like eating razor blades. It's like every eating, time. Yeah, it's like eating gravel, razor blades, and just like sharp, jagged like rocks. And just just crystallized sugar. Like it's yeah. just, it's just I might as well just pour the sugar in my mouth. <laughs> but, it, but, but as it, a kid, it was the greatest thing on the face of the planet. It blasted me into a whirlwind of peanut butter and chocolatey <laughs> taste. <laughs> Deep pull, very nice. <laughs> that was actually, I, mean, I know someone's gonna call me out. That's that actually was Reese's, Reese's Puffs. Puffs. Yeah, yeah, yeah but I, it which just, is also a good cereal. I, I had to say it. And all those cereals are, are cereals are available now, and I can remember distinctly as a kid sitting down with a ball. I'm like, this is the greatest cereal on the face of the planet. I, I, and now if I eat them, I'm like, I'm going to regret this in about 15 minutes. I had a bowl of Reese's Puffs like. A month ago, and it, it tore my stomach up. Yeah, I can't it do, handle it, it no more. Thirty year olds don't do well with a bowl of Reese's. I cannot cereals. imagine waking up first thing in the morning, sitting down and eating a bowl of Reese's. Just Pops. a straight sugar. I str- I did it. I did it. And my Whoa. mom and my mama let me. Oh well, yeah, That's hey, crazy. Me too. And I'm letting my kids do the same thing. I'm like, yeah, whatever. Okay, <laughs> yeah. enjoy it while you can. <laughs> We're gonna grab Doctor Shaw in just a minute. But if you have any questions or suggestions for new topics, send us a text to two five two. 582-5028, or you can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Well, good morning, afternoon, evening, Clearview Today listeners. My name is John. And I'm David. And we just want to take a quick second and let you know about another way that you can keep in touch with Dr. Shah's work, and that is his weekly podcast series, Sermons by Abadan Shah, PhD. As a lot of you may know, or maybe some of you don't know. If you don't know, you do now. And if you don't know, then maybe just... Pop off the podcast. David, I'm just playing. Pop off the podcast. I'm just playing. Keep listening. <laughs> Dr. Shaw is actually the lead pastor of Clearview Church in North Carolina. 
Every single weekend, he preaches expository messages that challenge and inspire us to live God-honoring lives. And one of the four core values of Clearview Church is that we're a Bible-believing church. So every sermon is coming directly from Scripture, which is great because that guarantees that there are timeless truths that are constantly applicable to our lives. This is a great resource because whether you're driving, whether you're cleaning the house, whether you're working out, you can always benefit from hearing the Word of God spoken into your life. And God's Word is always going to do something new for you every time you hear it. Sometimes it's conviction, and sometimes it's encouragement. But know that every time you listen to God's Word, you're inviting the Holy Spirit to move and work in your life. You guys can check out the sermons by Abaddon Shah, PhD podcast. First and foremost, check it out on our church app. Uh, That's the Clearview app. You can get that in the Google Play Store. You can get that on iTunes. But you can also find the podcast on the Apple Podcast app or on our website at clearviewbc.org. And listen, if you've got a little extra time on your hands, you just want to do some further reading, you can also read the transcripts of those sermons. Those are available on Dr. Shah's website, abaddonshah.com. And we're going to leave you guys a little link in the description so you can follow it. But for right now, David... Let's hop back in. All right. Welcome back to Clearview Today with Dr. Abaddon Shah, the daily show that engages mind and heart for the gospel of Jesus Christ. You can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com. If you have any questions or suggestions for new topics, send us a text to 252-582-5028. And if you've never listened to the Clearview Today Show before, we want to welcome you, let you know exactly who's talking to you today. Dr. Abaddon Shah is a PhD in New Testament textual criticism, professor at Carolina University, author, full-time pastor, and the host of today's show. You can find all of his work on his website. That's abaddonshah.com. And Dr. Shah, people have been texting in since yesterday's episode. So excited about this series. Yeah. So excited to dive into these autopsy reports. People are really quick to jump on Revelation. I think they're quick to jump on anything that has to do with like prophecy or end yeah. times yeah. or it's just. And I've it's, had people ask me, why don't you preach on prophecy? Uh-huh. And I remind them for two and a half years, I preached on nothing but prophecy. <laughs> <laughs> I covered everything from, from Ezekiel to, to Matthew 24 to uh, Daniel, First Thessalonians. Zechariah, of course, Revelation, I covered it all. Yeah, mm-hmm. First Corinthians fifteen. So I've done prophecy uh, for so much that I, I have backed off, not because I don't believe in prophecy, but I think prophecy is very important. Uh, there are blessings that a church receives when they study prophecy. Blessed are those who keep the words of this prophecy. Mm-hmm. So there are certain blessings that come when we study prophecy. Mm-hmm. I feel like people really don't get excited about prophecies that like have already been fulfilled. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. G, like G, like this was given to the people of Israel and then Jesus fulfilled it. Yeah. They're like, okay, that's cool. I want to know about the ones that are still coming. Like, yeah. I want to know about what's going to happen in the end. Time. They want to be able to have a timeline of how things are going to work out. Mm-hmm. So they can prep for it, I guess, or if they can prepare or... Yeah, in some ways, and I'm not negative about that. I think yeah. it's good to study. Yeah. But it's good to study so that you can live, number one, a holy life. Amen. Prophecy should lead you to holiness and not continue in sin. If you know that the master is coming soon, why are you living unholy lives? Right. Mm-hmm. Oh, no, I'm trying to be holy. Uh, well, let's not just think about sexual immorality. How about your words? How about gossiping? How about uh, negative behavior, bitterness, unforgiveness? Those are also things that God will test you when he comes and say, how are you living? Mm-hmm. Well, you got all this junk in your life. Mm-hmm. So prophecy, number one, should lead us to holiness, but also prophecy should lead us to evangelism. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If you truly believe that Jesus is coming soon, then don't you want everyone to be ready to meet him? Right. That should be the biggest push. I mean, the the urgency the the and the unexpectedness of Jesus is coming back should <laughs> that should motivate us to share the gospel at any and every opportunity. And yet people are just, oh, I want to have my laminate bookmark that I can put in my Bible that has the timeline of Revelation. But <laughs> you're not you're not getting the the push yeah. behind what we're talking about. I think one thing that's kind of interesting is how hard you've hit on jesus fulfilling everything in the old testament like Mm -hmm. the old testament being so critical to understanding jesus right yet at the same time we don't typically apply the old testament to revelation yeah yeah do you think that comes from the fact that a lot of people think that that's done the the ethnic ethnic israel is just kind of done for yeah and they don't really put that in in revelation at all well sometimes 
they put that too much into revelation mm. Mm. and they think oh this 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 was meant for them but now it's meant for the church mm. and it's done so it, it can be both mm. yeah and and i i want to say it as clearly as possible revelation is about the future mm-hmm. it's about the future it's not about some prophecies in the past some people believe that by the way that christ already came mm-hmm. and that's not biblical so revelation is about the future. Uh, also, to understand Revelation, we need to understand the Old Testament because a lot of the lingo resembles the Old Testament. So, in that sense, some of those people are right. Yes, it sounds like the Old Testament. Uh, uh, we, we should also consider first century Judaism. Mm-hmm. Some of the things that the book of Revelation talks about, especially those seven letters, uh, they're very uh, indicative of the time in which those letters were given, first century Judaism, uh, but also the Greco-Roman setting. Some things will not make sense unless you go back and study the history of people living in Asia Minor, Mm -hmm. in Turkey, the Greco-Roman world. Greco in the sense of Greek culture, Roman in the sense of Roman rule. Mm -hmm. Those are some of the cultural backgrounds you need to f- be familiar with in order to understand uh, this book. And in the context of the local church, mm-hmm. this, these prophecies were not given um, just for individual believers. Mm-hmm. Of course they are, but they were given to a body of believers. Mm-hmm. In fact, seven bodies to be exact, mm-hmm. right. to the seven churches mm-hmm. of Asia Minor. Yeah, I think one of the things we talked about yesterday that I've been thinking about and I've been kind of just letting letting kind of ruminate in my mind is that it's so centered on Jesus mm-hmm. and that we like we said we find that that completion of the Old Testament in the the, the character I guess for lack of a better word of, of Jesus but at the same time we we don't see Jesus in the Gospels the same way we see him in Revelation like in the Gospels he's like this kind of wise hippy dippy teacher who teaches love and patience and tolerance and understanding and all this stuff and that's a very skewered incomplete picture because here in Revelation Jesus has a very authoritative powerful stance and he's talking to these churches in a very authoritative examining way. Well, I feel like a lot of times when people are studying the Bible, especially studying the life of Christ, they see what they want to see in Jesus. They see him as who they who they want him to be. So if they see him as the kind of that free-spirited teacher who kind of roams around with his disciples, then that's that's the picture they're mapping on. They miss those passages where Jesus goes into the temple and starts overturning tables right. <laughs> and says, I'm here to do my Father's will. Yeah. They, they skip over those because it doesn't fit their mold of right. what they think Christ should be like. Very, very mm-hmm. true. Uh, keep in mind, he is the same God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob mm-hmm. in the Old Testament as he's of the New Testament. By the way, that 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 needs me that leads me to clarify a point. Mm-hmm. The, the way I study prophecy, and I have been doing this for years and years, uh, I'm not a dispensationalist. I'll go ahead and go on record on saying that. Do you want to say just very quickly what dispensationalism is? like in a That God dealt with different peoples in different ages in different ways. Got it. Mm. To, to bring them to salvation. Mm-hmm. So they may even sort of say that salvation has already, already always been through Jesus Christ, but in different times it was through different means, like mm-hmm. the law. Mm-hmm. Uh, or, or if you go to the Garden of Eden, was just simply not touching the fruit, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then the law, and so on and on. I, I don't believe that's very accurate. Right. And neither am I a covenantal, where I believe that it's different covenants. I believe that... Jesus Christ has always been the way. Mm-hmm. People before him were waiting for his coming. Mm-hmm. And since he came 2,000 years ago, we look back to his coming. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That he came, died, buried, rose again, and finished the work of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. Mm-hmm. And so, only one plan of salvation, but it was also through Jesus, and people knew. So I, I go... Uh, I don't go. Uh, I, I don't claim that it was just sort of uh, different means. People may not have known about Jesus, but as long as it was some kind of sacrament. No, I believe prior to Jesus coming, people knew someone was coming who would die for their sins, and that someone was God in flesh. Mm-hmm. And now we know for sure because all the prophecies are fulfilled in Christ, and He. Um, on the road to Emmaus, explained everything and said, this is this was me, this was me, this was me. So I believe people knew someone was coming to give their life and that someone was a son of God. Mm-hmm. And now we look back and know that he did come. 
Um, well, another thing about prophecy is we need to keep the distinction between Israel and the church. Mm-hmm. Mm. Sometimes people try to hold to this doctrine of supersessionism, that somehow the church has superseded Israel. And, and I don't believe that's correct. There are prophecies still to be fulfilled uh, for ancient Israel, and we need to honor that. Mm-hmm. So these are some, some parameters that I would suggest people to keep in mind and uh, be as consistent as possible when you're studying prophecy, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? So now going back to the whole thing about Jesus, he is the same one uh, he, who Daniel encountered in the Old Testament and John encounter in the New Testament, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and I think that's that's the that's kind of the sticker is that it's not two different testaments; it's one comprehensive story right. with the same central character. Yeah. That's right, giving the same message. That's yeah. right. I love those those that comparison in writing between Daniel and between John's writing in Revelation. This this picture of Christ that they both hold up independent of one another, but yet I mean it's it's obvious that this is the same person they're talking about. Right, mm-hmm. right. I mean, think about the, even how the encounters take place, the identity. Revelation 1.9, it says, I, John, both your brother and companion in the tribulation and kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ. So listen to how he identifies himself. Mm-hmm. How about Daniel? Daniel 10.12, in those days I, Daniel, Daniel yeah. was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant food, no, no meat or wine, on and on and on. Yeah, it's like if they're going to come out and say, this is a miraculous vision that I've been given, but I'm yeah. standing behind it. I'm right. putting yeah. my name on that vision. That's it. Which yeah. is crazy because like, if I had like a vision like that <laughs> in this day and age, I don't know if I'd be able to... Like, p- yeah. p- this anonymously yeah, maybe on the forum it, maybe somewhere I, online. <laughs> maybe I ate something bad. I'm going to post it and let somebody else kind of yeah, kind of right. take that and run with it. Right. And then the time, Revelation 1 day, 110 says, I was in the spirit of the, on the Lord's day. Daniel 10, 4, now on the 24th day of the first month. Now what I want us to understand here is that both John and Daniel did not have some fairy tale dream Vision like a long time ago, once upon a time. Yeah, mm-hmm. now this was at an actual place and an actual time. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't take place in a galaxy far, far away, far, far. long, long ago. <laughs> and it's, not, it's not some fable they invented, they put that timestamp on there because they're like, This is this you can really date, happened. You can People can up. verify that I was there. I mean, this yeah. you can you can prove this. Yeah, place Revelation 1 10 on the island that is called Patmos, Daniel 10 4. I was by the side of the great river that is the Tigris. Mm. Yeah. So one is in the Aegean, another one is near the Tigris River. And they're both they're both taking place during a period of just like of like exile. Like they've yeah. they're yeah. they're desolate. They're alone. They're scared. They're uh they're you know, they used to be part of this vibrant community, but now they've been exiled. No, they're right. in exile. Yeah. And then the books. Both of them talk about a book. Mm-hmm. So Revelation one eleven, I am the Alpha and the Omega the first and the last, and what you see, write in a book and send it to the seven churches which are in Asia, and as you know the list, uh, Ephesus, Smyrna, Pergamos, Thyatira, Sardis, Philadelphia, and to Laodicea, and Daniel 10.21, but I tell you what is noted in the scripture of truth. Wow. So these are not the books of life mm-hmm. in heaven. Mm-hmm. No, these are the books that they are writing. Mm -hmm. So both are writing a book. Wow. I I just want us to understand the parallels. Mm -hmm. So you cannot study the book of Revelation in isolation. You have to begin with the foundation of the Old Testament. Yeah, this this is not like a cool little gimmick. Like, look how similar these are. Isn't that cool? This is like, if you're going to take on the task of studying Revelation, you have to understand that you don't study it in a vacuum. You don't study right. it isolated right. by right. itself. You can't just pick out that one as your book study. You've got to understand it in its larger context. Yeah, I remember as a, I remember being in youth group and, and they would they would do stuff like this where you say, see, look at the par- look at look how they're the same. And I always walked away with like, that's kind of so interesting. What? Huh. Yeah, that's, co- <laughs> that's cool. It, it never it never clicked or was made that next step of the you have to read them as one. Right. right. There are ramifications right. in the sense of so now here are your hermeneutical guidelines mm-hmm. because of the parallels. Now read and study these letters like this. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's what we're trying to get to, folks, mm-hmm. on the on the YouTube as well as the radio podcast. The reason we're doing this comparison is so that when you study Revelation, don't do it as some of your favorite prophecy teachers mm-hmm. or your pastor or whatever. I mean, that's great, but make sure you have the foundation 
of the Old Testament. That's right. right? That's right. Absolutely. Misunderstandings are, are you, there's no room for them when they're when it comes to studying Scripture. That's right. Yeah. So, but this, this comparison between John and between Daniel's writings, it, it, it both are focused on on Christ. Both both are yes. focused on. I mean, they talk about things that are yet to come, but but right. both center on this this person of Jesus, right? As he as he has revealed himself to them. I mean, just Revelation nineteen ten says, "For the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Mm. For the witness of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy." You want to know what prophecy is all about? Mm-hmm. The one that is being given by the Holy Spirit, it is the witness of Jesus, the third, second person of the Godhead who is watching events unfold because he is outside of time. Mm-hmm. He's giving us how things will happen for us, time-bound yeah. people. So the witness of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. Mm. What is there, for John and Daniel, what is their reaction to this first yeah. like encounter with Jesus. It's the same. I mean, listen to Revelation 1.12. Then he then I turned to the voice, or turned to see the voice that spoke with me. You see the the sense that he's going about his life or he is stuck in this exile, and he's like, whoa. Mm. So also Daniel in Daniel 10:5, I lifted my eyes and look and looked and behold. Remember, John is in exile on the island of Patmos, mm-hmm. but Daniel also is in exile in Babylon. Babylon. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, how interesting. Very similar. Yeah, both of them are in exile. Yeah. What is exile, by the way? You're stuck somewhere where you don't want to be. Mm-hmm. You've been ripped away from your homeland, from your security, or your uh, normal way of life has been taken away from you, and you have been completely disheveled. But in that moment, God shows you that this is not the end that he is working towards something else. Mm. So both for John and for Daniel, exile uh, was preparing them for the future. Well, I think it also fed into their their reaction when they see Jesus because they're yeah. in this hopeless place. Yeah. And they're kind of at they're kind of at their lowest where all kind of seems to be lost. And then they see this king of glory and they just are like, I, I <laughs> Yeah, fall down just out. Yeah. Like what? What is? What does John say? He's like, I fell down as though I were dead. And I'm like, yeah. Holly, I think yeah, that's the only reaction I would have. Yeah. And then if how I'm did such a hopeless place? Daniel, read read that for us. Daniel ten seven. What does it say? It says, and I, Daniel, alone saw the vision. For the men who were with me did not see the vision, but a great terror fell upon them, so they fled to hide themselves. And then verse 8 goes on, Therefore I was left alone, and I saw this great vision, and no strength remained in me. Just like, from, just like John, yeah. he says, I fell at his feet mm-hmm. as dead, as mm-hmm. if I was dead. Mm-hmm. And Daniel says the same thing. Yeah. For my vigor was turned to frailty in me, and I retained no strength. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's crazy because these were people who were close to God. They, were, they, it were, they weren't like weary sinners who who saw like Paul like on the road to Damascus a sinner who's like I, I just have to drop him back like they were already close to God and yet at the same time they just became completely and utterly lifeless in yeah. his presence. Yes. You know we have this idea I, I at least I do or I did where I was gonna see Jesus and I'm just gonna give him a big hug and pat him on the back and clap yeah. him on the shoulder Thanks like for everything Jesus. Yeah thank you man that was so cool of you like we're buddies or something you know <laughs> not like he's the king of He'd be like of get everything. your hands off me. Yeah, I will. Oh. Yes sir. Yes sir. <laughs> Fell down as well. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. So again, this is an application there that I want us to miss, and the application is this: uh, so much better for you to meet Jesus as Savior and King, the humble Shepherd who calls us to come. Mm-hmm. He welcomes. He's he's softly and tenderly waiting for me to come to Him. Mm-hmm. If you don't meet Him like that, one day you will meet Him as the Judge, mm-hmm. like John encounter, like Daniel encounter. And they dropped almost as if they were dead. Yeah. yeah. One of the most interesting things to me when you read these prophecies is just the way they describe the person of Jesus. Because they go into such detail and the imagery is so alive and real. I almost feel as though it's like on the one hand, it's yes, it's this Jesus that we picture in our minds. But then it's this like otherworldly, mythical, grand, like mm, glorious yeah. description of, of who he is. Yeah. I mean, it tells us here in Revelation one twelve. And having turned, I saw seven golden lampstands, and in the midst of the seven lampstands, one like the Son of Man. Mm. Now listen to Daniel 7.13. 
Now, even though it's kind of earlier, it's still part of the same prophecy. Mm-hmm. Daniel 7, 13, I was watching in the night visions, and behold, one like the Son of Man coming with the clouds of heaven. How interesting that the same title is used, which is Son of Man. Yeah, because we're used to Son of God. Right. You know, we're used to he's the son of God, but he's also the son of man. Son that's of right. Man. And I, I feel like Full a lot of humanity times... humanity there. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's a part that I often ignore. Yeah. How interesting that Daniel describes him that way. Yeah. Before Jesus was was born as a, as a baby. Oh, that's true. Daniel describes him as a son of man. Yeah, that's true. Right. Very interesting. Yeah. And then the rest of the descriptions are also very similar. Let's go with John first in Revelation. Revelation one thirteen, that he was clothed with a garment down to the feet... And girded about the chest with a golden band. Now remember the golden part. His head and hair were white like wool. Remember that as well. As white as snow and his eyes like a flame of fire. Remember that as well. His feet were like fine brass. Remember that as well. (laughs) As if refined in a furnace and his voice as the sound of many waters. Also remember that. He had in his right hand seven stars out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword and his countenance was like the sun shining in its strength. Remember that as well. Mm. Now let's go to Daniel 7, 9. I watched till thrones were put in place in the ancient of days. Remember the, the hair being white like wool? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jesus is the ancient of days. His garment was white as snow. We read that just a little while ago. And the hair of his head was like pure wool. And that would... John saw his mm-hmm. head and hair were like white, like wool. That's right. Listen to verse 5. This is Daniel 10. I lifted my eyes and looked, and behold, a certain man clothed in linen whose waist was girded with gold of a fast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Remember the band of gold? Yep. yep. His body was like beryl, his face like the appearance of lightning, his eyes like torches of fire. We just read that. His eyes like flame of fire in John chapter 1, verse 14. Mm-hmm. And then... His arms and feet like burnished bronze in color. Well, look at verse 15 of Revelation 1. His feet were like fine brass. Mm -hmm. And the sound of his words like the voice of a multitude. And what does it say in Revelation 1 and verse um, 15? His voice as the sound of many Many waters. waters. (laughs) You know, heretics, they always aggravate me. (laughs) <laughs> when they talk about Jesus not being fully God or Jesus not being in the Old Testament and mm-hmm. Jesus being... I mean, come on. Yeah. He's right there. Yeah, you don't how read do you, something how do you like that? dispute that? Yeah, you don't read something like that and be like, well, I don't think he was actually fully God. He, he might have been a little bit of one or a little bit yeah. of the other. Maybe like a Hercules situation going Yeah, on, I don't think so. Yeah. 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 But it's Jesus. And then even the reaction, the instructions that are given... In Revelation 1, verse 17, But he laid his right hand on me, saying to me, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am he who lives and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. I have the keys of Hades and of death. And then Daniel ten twelve. Then he said to me, Do not fear. Isn't that interesting? Mm-hmm. Same command. Do not fear. Daniel, from, for from the first day that you set your heart to understand and to humble yourself before your God... Your words were heard, and I have come because of your words. Mm. And then talks about other things. But I appreciate you you, the way the word you use there. That's the same command. It's Mm. not an encouragement. Hey, hey, don't be afraid. It's gonna be okay. It's like it's okay. Don't be scared. And we've said that on the. That's not. Yeah, we've said that on the show before. But it's a it's a good way because we're talking about the way to study this. That's the way that you think about that command. It's it's a command. Do not be afraid. Right. It is a command from this awesome, I mean, the, the word in all of its meaning, this awesome being, do not be afraid. Yeah. I order you, do not fear. Right. Yeah. And then in Daniel 10, 14, I want to point out something, because I said earlier that we need to keep the distinction between ethnic Israel and the church. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Now listen to Daniel chapter 10 and verse 14. It says, now I have come to make you understand what will happen to your people, your people, the Jewish people the descendants of the tribe of Judah, of the, tri- uh, of the lineage of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Mm-hmm. So your people in the latter days, for the vision refers to many days yet to come. 
So for all those people who think the church has replaced Israel, explain to me what Daniel is talking about. Right. right. Make right. that make sense. Unless Jesus is wrong. You, if you feel like Jesus yeah. got proven wrong or something. I don't think you want to go down that road. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> it leads to a lot of misunderstanding. That's right. So we need to make sure we keep that distinction. Know where you have to go, okay, these prophecies are for the church. Yeah. These instructions are for the church. And these are for God's people. Mm-hmm ethnic Israel. Mm-hmm. And so, again, Revelation, I believe much of that prophecy refers to ethnic Israel going through tribulation, and Daniel chapter 10, verse 14 corroborates that, mm-hmm. and we need to maintain those distinctions. Yeah, that's right. And maybe in the days ahead, we can kind of dive deeper into yes. those. those yeah. I would well. love to. Absolutely. Love it's to. important for us, as we're talking about autopsy reports, we've got to understand the one who is writing that's the right. autopsy yeah, reports. That's exactly yes. right. If you guys enjoyed today's topic, if you have questions or suggestions for new topics, send us a text to 252-582-5028, or you can visit us online at clearviewtodayshow.com. Click that link at the bottom, donate to the Clearview Today Show, and be a part of what God is doing, reaching the nations with the gospel of Jesus. We love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow on Clearview Today.